Now the main session will be moderated by President uh, Ko Yohan of the Korea Institute for National Unification. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So earlier, we have heard about the significance of Yangul on the Korean Peninsula uh, from uh, County Governor of Yangul. And uh, I am uh, Ko Yuhan, President of uh, Kinu, uh, who will be moderating the main session of the DMZ Global Forum 2021. In the main session, we will discuss peace establishment in the DMZ in the era of climate change. Let me first introduce uh, the speakers of the session. First, we have uh, Professor uh, Lee Young Sung of the Graduate School of Environmental Studies at Seoul National University. Next, uh, we have Secretary General Kim So Hee of the Climate Change Center. We have Dr. Choi Yong Han, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute for National Security Strategy. We have Dr. Choi Eun Ju, a Research Fellow of the Sejong Institute. So in the main session, the presentations will discuss uh, climate energy cooperation in the DMZ in relation to the Biden administration's uh, climate change policies, uh, the ecosystem and the environment uh, in the DMZ, uh, inter-Korean cooperation in the DMZ and border area, and uh, North Korea's voluntary national review and inter-Korean cooperation in the DMZ in the border area. So these are four topics that will be discussed in the presentations of the four speakers. Uh, all all four, to four uh, topics are related to one another, but uh, they deal with a broad range of issues. Now, many challenges uh, of the humankind are not separate, but closely related to one another. That's why we will uh, deal with all four topics in the main session. When we look at the Korean Peninsula, there have been conventional threats like the North Korean nuclear program. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic, many people st start to feel that maybe the COVID-19 is more threatening than the nuclear weapons in, the, in North Korea. So we've uh, experienced a lot of challenges in our daily lives, having to wear face masks and so on. So the North Korean nuclear issues uh, are uh, issues, uh, conventional uh, security issues, uh, where we uh, see the enemy and the friendly separately. But when it comes to climate change, uh, there is no uh, clear uh, enemy. And we need common responses uh, to climate change between uh, th the two Koreas and also with the international community. And in the Aquino uh, speech by the Executive Director David Beasley of the uh, WFP, we can see that there is a food crisis going on in North Korea. All these topics shouldn't be discussed separately, but together as they are closely related to one another. And the uh, common thread of all these topics will be the DMZ. and that'll be the key in our discussion. In this session, we have four speakers, and there is no separate uh, discussion panel. I believe that means the speakers need to engage in discussion after their presentations. 
So each speaker will be given 15 minutes. And after listening to all four presentations, we'll have a uh, discussion among the speakers. Now, I'd like to first invite Professor Lee Young Sung of Seoul National University, uh, who will present on the uh, Biden administration's climate change policy and the climate and energy cooperation in the DMZ. Yes, and as introduced, I'm Young Sung from Seoul National University in the um, Graduate School of the Environmental Studies, uh, which also covers of climate change. And today, what I want to talk about is the creating new value and required for the new age uh, is what drives innovation. And based on that concept, um, while accommodating the recent changes, in the inter-Korean relations, uh, how to boldly uh, re design the approach to uh, renewing uh, the uh, relations. Uh, let me make proposal, a few proposals to that end. Um, the rules of uh, games are changing. One of them uh, would be, I believe, the changing climate uh, change policies of the Biden administration. Now, they also call it now climate crisis rather than climate change. So I think this is a strategy to respond to a crisis facing the humankind. And this is also a way, a strategic decision to solidify its leadership in international relations and global economy. And in that context, uh, DMZ, in the new uh, rules of game that is uh, about climate change, uh, it can contribute to the uh, preservation of human race, but at the same time, uh, it could also serve uh, improving our competitive edge as well as that of the Korean Peninsula. Now, I think the um, biggest uh, influence on the Biden was a global green rule uh, by Jeremy Viken. And if you open that book, the first chapter title is that to execute this vision recently in the U.S. Um, Senate, uh, they are actually uh, planning to have about two trillion dollars of infrastructure investment, and this uh, infrastructure is not of the infrastructure of yesterday, but it's focusing on responding to climate change, and I think that can be linked to our discussion about DMZ. Uh, about the recent uh, changes, uh, what uh, people are saying, uh, we can compare it to uh, events in the past uh, history. This is what actually news newspaper said in 1903. Uh, as you know, the Bentz brothers under the Bentz uh, brand uh, started to make uh, automobiles. But just 13 uh, years later, uh, in 1903, this newspaper said, uh, you know, there are many cars on the road now, but uh, two from what, 10 or 20 years now, still carriage will become an important uh, transportation means. So after the band first introduced uh, automobiles after just 10 years, if you see the Fifth Avenue of New York, all is carriage. So that is photo on the left. Uh, you see the one knee in what is in the red circle is an automobile. But just thir in 13, 1913, 13 years later, everything is cars and only the red circle is horse or carriage. So the change is very rapid. In the fourth industrial revolution, the change is uh, faster. Let me give you an example. In 2007, iPhone was first introduced by Steve Jobs. And uh, up to then, Nokia was the powerhouse of the mobile phones. And uh, it took only about six years for Nokia to crumble. So the change is faster. With the fourth industrial revolution in the era of the climate change, change is happening very fast. And in responding to that uh, change environment, what can we do? Uh, let me again talk about the 
fast uh, acceleration of change. So this is uh, from Tony Seba's uh, very um, well-known book, and it shows that the solar panel price from 1975 was $100. It dropped to 60 cents uh, before this book was published, and now it's uh, less than even that. So there is, of course, the instability related to renewable energies and others. But in the industrial ecosystem, solar, wind power, and renewable energies are starting to play important role as we introduce carbon taxes uh, in the area of climate change. That means that uh, companies that do the um, export while emitting a lot of uh, carbons in production would be levied with uh, carbon tax. And that would mean that POSCO, with the red revenue of 3 trillion won, needs to pay about 100 billion won. And Samsung, 50 uh, you know, trillion won. And even if the carbon tax is only 3 uh, percent, it's 1.5 trillion won. Petro company, petrol oil companies, uh, the navy is about 10 billion uh, trillion in total. They also need to pay 3 percent of that into this type of taxes. And this carbon uh, border taxes, which become a uh, normal, they say, by 2030, uh, you know, the cash burden for these uh, companies would be really huge. So in Korea, the industrial ecosystem and competitive edge is really remarkable, has become envy of the world. And there are many key uh, technologies that we have that will drive our future growth. But uh, we in uh, smartphone mobility and other things, uh, there are hurdles, you know, there are clashes of interest. So we do have technologies, but we can, we are being marginalized in the core growth industry of the future. The growth industry futures might not be able to take uh, good roots in South Korea, but if we join hands with North Korea, most of these constraints, I believe, can be overcome. So there could be a lot of opportunities uh, going forward. And uh, I believe uh, this has been researched by Minister of Unification also. And um, challenges of South Korea, there are many, but they can be overcome by, again, joining hands with North Korea. Due to time constraint, I'll skip. And because of our efforts to uh, respond Respond to uh, climate change. Um, let me talk about Alibab. This is uh, occurring. Uh, RE100 requires renewable energy 100%. And this RE100, not using any fossil fuel uh, in making products, only then uh, they will allow uh, import to certain countries. So if you see in terms of wind power, uh, compared to Jeju Island around Pe to mountain in the north, uh, it's more uh, suitable for wind power generation and also solar power also around DMZ area. Uh, they say is a more has offers more favorable conditions. Now let me also give a, um, example another example. In South Korea, we don't have much land for solar and wind power, but in North Korea, DMZ and going beyond, there are many empty lands that we can use. The power consumption in North Korea, if we only use, uh, the, supply them with the renewable en energy, if you see the fifth line in this slide, it um, says it's only 1 20th of uh, elect power consumption of South Korea. And if we only uh, supply that with the solar and wind power, how much land is needed? It only requires about um, a six, one sixtieth of Seoul. This means that uh, only 40% of one district in Seoul is enough to deliver 100% of uh, electric uh, demand of North Korea. It takes only about 2 trillion won. Let's just say we will invest 4 trillion won. You know, we will make the investment and you spend all 2 trillion won of energy will take the rest 
and in the DMZ area, RE100, with the clean energy generation, uh, we build in DMZ area smart factory, and we can create kind of the world leading RE100 belt around DMZ. This one for Korean industries, a lot of investment that goes in in paying taxes can be uh, eliminated at one go. So there are, can, of course, practical constraints, but I believe it's worth to think about as a possible opportunity in the future. So the numbers that I've shared with you uh, are uh, pay, uh, from our uh, smart city related uh, research uh, results. Another thing in Kaesong Industrial Complex. Now, one thing I want to sh share with you about that is in the Kaesong Industrial Complex, uh, it's about 100, uh, 1 million pyong, where uh, 55,000 people worked before closing. And in South Korea, uh, we, they had about 4,000 uh, people uh, that worked in a similar type of industrial uh, complex. Uh, so if we had the same um, number of uh, employees in uh, South Korea, we would have required a lot more investment and resources and land. So if we can reopen the Kaesong complex, we can make that a home for you know future growth potential industries. And through the energy cooperation I talked about, with only 100% renewable energies can be supplied in the Kaesong and can become like world-renowned R100 industrial complex. And this would also strengthen our strategic competitive edge. And in terms of um, uh, re global response to climate change, it can make a uh, very valid contributions. So it's a type of uh, cooperation. And there could be different types of cooperation, like in platforms, mobility, energy, and other things. And maybe. I told you um, climate change can be a rule changer and uh, or game changer, and uh, so we need to really think about that. Again, and DMZ is a treasure trove of um, ecosystem and uh, species, animals, and uh, flora and fauna. So to avoid that uh, trove being destroyed, uh, we need to focus first on knowledge-intensive industry. But uh, for that to work, we need capital technology, labor uh, intensive industries uh, around it. So Yanggu, Inje, Paju, Choron, these um, counties and areas, um, they can be the uh, base for other uh, industries that support knowledge intensive industry of DMZ. And another thing is that for uh, knowledge intensive industry to grow in its organic link with other uh, labor technology, other uh, intensive uh, industries. But the knowledge workers want clean, convenient, safe uh, living environment. So in the uh, border uh, area to improve uh, quality of life, smart green uh, city concept can be adopted so that uh, the quality of life for those uh, living around the border area can be imp improved. So this is uh, I mean, uh, the project I did with the Ministry of Environment that we can um, apply it toward that end. And I think as a conclusion of what I've uh, just told you would be this. In the climate change or climate crisis, uh, to respond to that, to make international uh, contribution, we hope DMZ can become RE100 belt. And from Kaesong to Paju area, the DMZ area, uh, maybe US companies can come in as export to China, and Yanggu, Inje, and Wonju in that belt, or zone, Chinese companies can come in to export to the US and Japan. And uh, although we had a brief discussion yesterday, labor costs in North Korea, uh, their GDP is 13,000, and uh, it's 100 times more for uh, China. So I think more U.S. and Chinese companies can join here. 
and in the eco about where the eco diversity is preserved as an environment friendly industrial zone and linked to a smart grid uh, uh, or green city uh, we can have a long term uh, plan and uh, we can start for planning that today thank you very much thank you very much for your presentation now we will invite Director Kim Sohee of Cl Climate Change Center we will make a presentation on climate change and the DMZ ecosystem and the environment. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to the DMZ Global Forum 2021. And it's a great honor uh, for me to be making a presentation on climate change regarding the DMZ. The Climate Change Center was established in 2008 as an NPO uh, working on climate change adaptation and mitigation. So I'm not really an expert on the ecology and the environment in the DMZ. And um, I think I uh, we'll be able to learn more about the ecology and the environment of the DMZ in the later sessions. So I will uh, focus more on climate change uh, and how it is being linked with uh, the ecology and the environment these days. And one of my key messages is Climate change is closely related to political and economic issues, unlike uh, the conventional environmental issues. So, and um, uh, from uh, November 11th, uh, there will be uh, the Conference of Parties in uh, Glasgow of Scotland, where President Moon Jae-in will be taking part. Uh, and that's actually the conference where North Korean officials uh, take part in. Uh, and uh, there have been such discussions in the past conference of parties. So I will deal with that as well. First of all, uh, I will give you an overview on carbon neutrality. Uh, and then uh, talk about biodiversity in the DMZ uh, in the context of the climate crisis. And lastly, I will talk about common responses uh, to climate crisis uh, regarding the ecology and the environment uh, in the DMZ. Now, uh, South Korea uh, hasn't been through much uh, disasters recently, uh, but there have been many uh, across the world. There was the uh, wildfire in California, the uh, food crisis in Yemen, uh, and the uh, uh, glacier melting and landslides in north northern India. Uh, and now extreme well, weather events uh, have become major issues in the economy as well. Uh, many uh, insurance companies are talking about how to hedge uh, the risk of extreme weather uh, events. So it's difficult for us to control them, uh, but uh, mitigate them and uh, adapt to them. In, in the uh, uh, 2021 Davos Forum, the leaders uh, talked about the risks of the world that can impact the economy and society. And recently, uh, failure uh, to respond to climate change topped the list of risks uh, uh, by leaders surveyed. So a failure uh, will lead to the uh, devastation uh, of all countries across uh, the world is not just an issue uh, for the least developed countries. Uh, so this is another illustration that uh, the entire world uh, is really focusing uh, on carbon neutrality. And one of the more uh, detailed issues related to that is uh, extinction uh, of uh, species. Uh, now, many people are realizing that conservation of uh, species uh, it is closely related to responding to climate change. 
In the sixth report of the IPCC, the average global temperature has risen by 0.14 degrees Celsius in the last 10 years. Now, note that this is only global average, the uh, speed of growth uh, in the temperature differs from one region to another, and the Korean Peninsula is actually experiencing faster increase in temperature. And this will, of course, uh, lead to faster climate change. Uh, in, uh, it was in 2015 when there were two uh, uh, major uh, international uh, agreements, the uh, Paris Agreement uh, and the uh, SDGs. In particular, the Paris Agreement uh, has set targets for 2030 and 2050. And uh, it was agreed uh, in Paris that uh, we should stop discussing uh, any uh, skepticism uh, about climate change caused by uh, human activities and instead uh, focus on how we can make efforts uh, to uh, respond to the uh, impacts of climate change. And uh, unlike past uh, agreements that only obliged advanced countries to fight climate change, uh, the Paris Agreement uh, obliged all countries, including developing countries, uh, to uh, make efforts Uh, in uh, set a target of curbing climate change under 2 degrees Celsius by uh, 2100. But as we have already seen, 0 0.14 degrees Celsius increase in the last 10 years. Uh, that is why developing countries uh, in Paris demanded uh, that uh, we should set a target not under 2 degrees Celsius, but under 1.5 degrees Celsius. And with this uh, target uh, as a premise, uh, countries discuss uh, what should be done uh, to achieve that. Uh, and in Songdo, uh, 2018, uh, countries agreed uh, that uh, we should curb emissions by 45% compared to 2010 by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Uh, so the leaders uh, of the International Society uh, agreed on the declaration. And uh, South Korea uh, also decided to achieve net zero or carbon neutrality by 2050. So what does the uh, carbon neutrality mean? So there are many uh, sectors uh, emitting carbon. Uh, and the carbon uh, emitted uh, in these sectors uh, can be absorbed uh, with some measures uh, in when the when all the emissions are offset uh, with the uh, absorption, we can achieve carbon neutrality with zero net emission. Uh, so, uh, in this concept, the role of the carbon sink uh, is critical, including forest, sea, wetland, and swamp. Uh, so, we can develop new technologies to curb emissions, uh, but as uh, that cannot be done overnight, we should reduce emissions by expanding carbon sink. And uh, part of those efforts uh, would be the uh, RE100 uh, initiative, obliging all uh, corporations to use 100% renewable energy for their operation. Uh, and ESG uh, management, which uh, had existed uh, before the discussion of carbon neutrality, but uh, it's gaining new traction uh, globally. Uh, and many people are also uh, reviewing the introduction of carbon pricing mechanisms. And now, the largest financial institutions in the U.S. are also uh, focusing on uh, carbon neutrality because many of 
uh, the uh, uh, corporations they have invested in uh, are showing uh, losses uh, due to uh, uh, carbon, emission, carbon emissions. And that's why many the, of those financial institutions are uh, shifting their investments uh, to uh, more ESG-oriented uh, businesses. Now, they are also uh, key major shareholders in the largest businesses uh, in Korea. So we need to uh, pay attention to their portfolio rebalancing. So uh, in the context of these uh, trends, many uh, people are discussing nature-based solutions uh, to expand carbon sink which will contribute to achieving carbon neutrality. Now, uh, nature-based solutions uh, protect the ecosystem uh, and uh, utilize, manage, and restore it in a sustainable manner in order to effectively uh, combat climate change uh, and social problems. In now, managing the DMZ can also be understood uh, as part of the nature-based solutions for carbon neutrality. And uh, from this perspective, we can uh, both take a look at the value uh, of uh, the uh, DMZ uh, and how it can contribute uh, to the nature-based solutions for carbon neutrality. Now, there has been many uh, international discussions uh, on this, uh, and uh, also I'd like to emphasize that money is flowing uh, to uh, these areas in the private sector as well. Now, 15 minutes is just too short for me. Now, there is the uh, Green Climate Fund, uh, uh, of which headquarters is located in Songdo. Uh, is uh, the GCF? Uh, uh, has financed about $100 billion to support developing countries to combat climate change. And uh, many of the initiatives uh, of the uh, GCF is also nature-based solutions, uh, including the restoration of Reiki of the Philippines uh, and the wetlands in Uganda. Uh, if these initiatives are feasible, we can also pursue uh, similar initiatives in the DMC. And this is a summary of why we are now talking about ESG. And there's this organization called the LEAF Coalition. Uh, it is a uh, coalition of the United States and advanced countries in Europe uh, for uh, planting trees. Uh, and this initiative is funded uh, by major global corporations, including large businesses uh, in South Korea, according to their uh, recent messages. So carbon neutrality uh, is linked to the uh, carbon sink, uh, and expanding carbon sink is where uh, money is flowing into. And let me pass this part uh, because it'll be discussed more uh, in detail later. So the DMZ is uh, such a treasure uh, of uh, the uh, ecosystem, we should really uh, uh, nurture it uh, and make it known uh, to the uh, international society. Uh, now, President Moon uh, has uh, suggested establishing an international peace zone here, and the UN Secretary General also agreed uh, to that vision. So I really I uh, hope that we can have a venue where we can discuss uh, DMZ as part of the uh, nature-based solution uh, as well as uh, international peace in the next uh, uh, conference of parties. So I'm not talking about uh, zero development uh, in the uh, DMZ. As we are seeing money flowing into uh, NBS, uh, we can utilize that to um, conserve the DMZ so that it can work as a carbon sink and at the same time develop it uh, with uh, sustainability and fighting climate change at its uh, center. Now, uh, initiatives uh, have been implemented 
uh, mostly by the uh, Ministry of the uh, Environment, but I don't believe this is a domestic issue anymore. Uh, it should be uh, a global uh, initiative uh, closely related to climate change uh, and uh, carbon neutrality. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Now, uh, if you know, due to time constraints, uh, it didn't cover everything, then I'll give you a chance to speak about it a bit later on in our discussion time. Next, uh, we'll move to um, Dr. Uh, Choi Yong Han, uh, who will discuss about the climate change DMG's uh, cooperation between uh, South and uh, North uh, Korea. Yes, hello, I'm a senior research fellow at the Institute of National Security Strategy, and my name is uh, uh, Choi Yong Han. I think um, DMZ is the area where we see the uh, errors of uh, armistice and climate change result in uh, natural disasters, and uh, North Korean natural disasters actually also are impacting South uh, Korea. Uh, so. It's not only an issue in um, North Korea, but now the um, it's impacting South Korea. So DMZ, because of that, we see a lot of uh, uh, challenges, uh, not only um, due to issues that covers whole Korean Peninsula, but also North Korean issues coming over to South Korea and vice versa. So. Uh, DMZ was uh, created to Korea, and everybody knows of that. And this demarcation uh, line, Dean Lusk and Charles Bones, uh, who actually drew this, these are the photos of them. And the Soviet uh, army was already on Korean Peninsula. Uh, American soldiers uh, were not here, so they just uh, took a map and just uh, you know marked it half and half. And uh, Americans wanted to have the capital on their part. Uh, and that's how we had this line. And then five years year later, we had the Korean War, and this is due to the Cold War uh, era, and uh, it became a kind of um, a domestic war as well international war because of the Cold War situation, and it, got, uh, it um, involved various countries. So we were at the for uh, forefront of Cold War era. So not only that, we were also at the forefront of um, a division of a country. And uh, not only had we uh, tension and um, division and clash between North and South, but also South-South uh, uh, clashes. So the uh, problem became very multifolded and complex, uh, uh, resulting in not being able to be solved very easily. And after the Korean War, what kind of regime was uh, created? If you look at the agreement on armistice, the signatories uh, say that uh, did not believe that this agreement will last 70 years. Uh, they thought a new um, agreement will come after the next round of uh, political negotiation, but that did not happen. So if you look at the details of the armistice agreement, because it was a war that did not uh, was did not uh, end. Uh, by law, uh, who's going to govern about this? Uh, on the south side, it was the uh, UN command. And uh, for South Korea, preventing uh, and preparation for possible future wars, who's going to um, take uh, the ownership of that? That relates to the uh, control, uh, command control during a war. And that is still an open issue, resulting in various co conflicts um, and tensions in uh, the Korean Peninsula as well as in the South uh, Korea. And just as a reminder, the armistice agreement, how unstable it is, uh, is clearly shown between the borders between South and North Korea, be it peace agreement or armistice agreement, be whether the war is over or or is a uh, temporary been, uh, been hold, uh, you need to have a clear uh, demarcation line or the border so that there will be no longer clashes. So this is the borders. Uh, but the borders uh, did not go into the uh, ocean or uh, sea. So there are three different uh, legal characteristics involved, uh, DMZ. 
it's based on the uh, demarcation line between in two countries, uh, two Koreas, strictly limits uh, people's access. But the ocean area, uh, it was not such a, uh, there is no such a demarcation uh, or boundary now. So there was no MDL, uh, but it was uh, managed as a zone. And uh, it actually allowed for private ship to cross the border lines or the boundary lines, but uh, conventionally just being managed as if it's the same as DMZ. And Armistice Agreement did not have, uh, as I said, uh, border lines or boundary lines in the uh, ocean. Uh, South Korean armies already had proceeded uh, in the North Korean uh, seas, so we could not just uh, have the same uh, line as the DMZ, uh, latitude or the longitude. So they it actually resulted in few clashes in the uh, ocean area uh, and um, still is an open issue. So doing something in DMZ means that uh, requires uh, some changes on the armistice status, the status in the DMZ in the last government. Uh, having a peace park, as it uh, administration suggested, uh, actually in the armistice agreement says only 2,000 people can go into DMZ and probably many thousand for each uh, Korea. And that thousand people, uh, because in DMZ uh, soldiers cannot in, we have so-called private uh, police uh, uh, going in that uh, area, and as a civil people goes in there, armistice agreement needs to be uh, revised because armistice agreement is a military agreement. So the uh, jurisdiction is with the UN. So administration uh, needs to uh, be uh, allowed to North and South Korea on a temporary basis. And that is being done. So DMZ uh, talking about this always a very uh, tricky issue. It's a complex issue. and. Uh, it, uh, because um, just doing something, even small things, would have ripple effect uh, of changes in the RMSD agreement. So it's uh, about jurisdiction issue as well as administration issue, and it's become always a uh, issue for a few years. And about the climate change, um, I'll cover this quickly because it was already discussed by two presenters. As the you know climate uh, is rising, and if we do not nothing, it will get worse. And this is uh, uh, the weather uh, or climate forecast uh, from the Meteorological Services of Korea. And it says that 20, up to 2040, there will be less rainfall. But after that, uh, whatever the scenario, rainfall rises again. So for the next 20 years, there will be less rain is something we can anticipate. And overall, drought uh, is also increasing. The issue here is that the climate change uh, impacts uh, both two Koreas, but uh, there will be more disasters on the north side because they have uh, weaker uh, infrastructure. So this is from uh, Belgium. Uh, and U, uh, U.S. Uh, report, and it says uh, the natural disaster um, damage uh, is well, North Korea is uh, world second largest after India because of this uh, bare forest without any uh, trees. So if same rainfall uh, results in uh, high, bigger damage in uh, North Korea. And if you see the climate change report uh, by the US NIC, it actually uh, taught, uh, chose 11 vulnerable countries, and uh, one of them is North Korea. Climate change also results in natural disasters, and it also can result in um, uh, pandemics. And that is uh, become severe in the border um, area uh, in between winter and uh, summer, we have uh, very dress changes in rainfall. Uh, that's the same for two Koreas. Uh, we have Bukhan River, Imjingang River, that crosses both Koreas. And Injun and Bukhan River, uh, North Korea did the same thing. In the Bukhan River, they created uh, Kungansan Dam, and Imjingang, they created Hamgang uh, Dam. So Kungansan Dam, when it was constructed in the uh, late 80s, they actually blew up. Uh, if they blew up, uh, it could flood. Uh, the you know so and so we collected uh, money to create a dam of peace and they said it was a fraud uh, later on but anyway we constructed a dam uh, satellite uh, photos showed there was uh, some um, 
uh, cracks in the uh, Kumgang uh, Dam area because uh, they didn't uh, renovate. So we also uh, renovated a peace dam to counter that. And then um, another dam of the uh, Kundam Dam uh, resulted in uh, flood of uh, South Korean campers. And uh, that uh, resulted in uh, another natural disaster. So they created dams. We create our own uh, dams. And if they are flood, it could also uh, impact uh, South uh, Korea. So again, we are at the basin and estuary of all these uh, river systems. So if there's a heavy rainfall in North Korea, it will infect uh, South Korea. So uh, there's uh, Oh, less also power being generated in North side. Some say because of the dam construction. Some say it's because of the climate change. But anyway, after building Kungansen uh, Dam in North Korea, they have less hydropower generation. That is a fact. So be it be less um, uh, power generation because of dam or climate change, because we are at the estuary, we are in a more vulnerable uh, position, so we need to cooperate. And another uh, thing is uh, the river f during the drought uh, season, there will be less water coming from the north side. So in the Gyeonggi uh, pro province, if you see the water demand uh, forecast by 2050, they will lack by 60,000 one uh, per day. And if the current trend continues, uh, this additional uh, industrial complex uh, construction, urban development will be difficult. So we need to co cooperate with North Korea to have a secure water flow. And as there's no longer healthcare system, viable healthcare system in North Korea, there's a lot of epidemics and a pandemic. Now we have this huge COVID-19, but all along the border um, area, there's always always been epidemics of malaria, which has disappeared in South Korea. But by 90s, uh, we saw soldiers in DMZ uh, or the uh, in the and they are getting it. This was coming from uh, North Korea. So malaria in the western uh, border area, uh, and it's expanding because uh, clearly it's due to destruction of the healthcare system um, on the north side. It's seeping to South Korea, and as the climate gets warmer, it's impacting even on the further southern uh, regions of South Korea. But of course, malaria doesn't result in death in South Korea. But I think it's a clear uh, sample uh, or indication. There could be other diseases, like uh, there are uh, epidemics and epi uh, pandemics and uh, con Contamin uh, contamination could happen by um, animals, flowers, mosquitoes of uh, birds and mosquitoes, and that could result in huge, uh, devastating effect on the South Korea. So joint response is needed, and also forests or tree bacteria that goes from south to the north, the other way around. The, so this is a swine fever from Africa. And uh, you thought this would not be able to cross the um, borders, but it did through the wild uh, boars and pigs. It's coming to the south um, area. So this is having devastating effect in the pig and swine industry. And now we need to think about it, although all the efforts are now being consumed by COVID-19. And this is not related to climate change, but it relates to division of two Koreas. Because of uh, divisions, uh, the people living around the border area, it's a heavily guarded area. 
meaning the citizens here have very lower quality of life. So they want uh, development. And whenever there's some signs of change between inter-Korean relations, they really want um, uh, the development to happen in the region. And I think uh, it's something we need to think about uh, going forward. I mean, I've been um, here and there about my presentation. But anyway, conclusion is this. Now, the border uh, area is kind of test bed for uh, transforming the armistice regime into peace regime. Uh, doing something here, it starts from military jurisdiction, and it also entangles uh, important tests how to switch from the armistice to peace regime. And you know there have been. A lot of agreements uh, that become use, uh, had that has been signed between two Koreas, and if they are um, respected, and we if we have really joint committee committee governing the uh, DMZ, really established uh, with participating two Koreas, uh, who knows what will happen? And uh, you know, uh, various um, uh, and healthcare is about uh, survival. Uh, you know, various epidemics, pandemics, and also infectious diseases. And, you know, between two Koreas, we all think the nuclear weapon uh, missiles are the most important issue, but I think um, there are other issues. Uh, before there were nuclear weapons, there were other challenges that we had to solve with North Korea, and that have not gone uh, away. So these are very fundamental uh, challenges. North Korea requires vaccines and medicines, and there will be other pandemics in the future. So we need to very soon take actions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Let's move on to the last uh, presentation on the Voluntary National Review of North Korea and Inter-Korean Cooperation in the DMZ and the Border Area. The speaker is Dr. Chen Ju of the Sejong Institute. Good morning. My name is Chen Ju from the Sejong University. So today I will uh, so talk about the uh, VNR of North Korea, uh, which was submitted in July this year by the North Korean government. So uh, I will take a look at uh, the North Korea's uh, report uh, to understand uh, what it's doing uh, in relation to the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, of the United Nations. And in the uh, VNR uh, report, uh, we can understand some of the North Korean perspective on the DMZ uh, and find ways of inter Korean cooperation in this area. So, in my presentation, I will give you an overview on the UN SDGs and the VNR, or Voluntary National Review, and why it's significant. Next, I will talk about the 2021 VNR report submitted by North Korea. Now, the report itself uh, deals with a broad range of issues, so I will focus on issues uh, related to the DMZ, the border area, uh, and the environment. And lastly, I will talk about uh, potential ways for inter-Korean cooperation in the DMZ and border area. First of all, the UN uh, SDGs, or Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it's a set of new international development uh, norms uh, suggested in 2015. So uh, previously, uh, it was Millennium Development Goals, or the uh, DMZ. Uh, but from 2015, uh, the International Society agreed to focus more on sustainability uh, and uh, pursue more comprehensive development by 2030. So the motto of the SDGs is leaving no one behind. 
Uh, so uh, in the agenda, uh, there are 17 goals and 169 uh, targets. And in, uh, in many people believe that the SDGs uh, is an advancement uh, compared to uh, the past in four major aspects. First of all, flexibility. Uh, every country uh, has to pursue the 17 goals, uh, but uh, each country uh, has autonomy uh, to set specific targets based on their own uh, circumstances. Uh, second, uh, inclusiveness. Uh, in the past, poverty uh, in health uh, have been the focus uh, in supporting uh, developing countries, uh, but we are now dealing with a broader range of issues, including the environment, uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, and other aspects of the lives of human beings. So the MDGs are focused on developing countries, but SDGs, which is more uh, inclusive and comprehensive, uh, involves both developing countries and uh, developed countries. And it is also inclusive uh, in that not just governments, but also non-governmental organizations are engaged to participate in the SDGs. So uh, the uh, SDGs are long-term goals. Uh, that is why the UN obliges uh, member states to uh, summit voluntary national review in uh, in, uh, in shorter terms uh, on the uh, implementation and progress of the SDGs. The, so the VNR is a basic uh, document uh, that can serve as the uh, foundation for uh, international cooperation uh, to meet the targets set by uh, each country. So let's uh, take a look at North Korea's uh, VNR. Uh, in uh, June this year, uh, its first VNR was submitted to the UN. Uh, they were supposed to submit it actually uh, last year, but uh, they asked for uh, a postponement due to the pandemic and other circumstances. So uh, in the uh, uh, VNR, there are some interesting uh, points. In the 1990s, North Korea suffered uh, a lot of difficulties uh, due to famine. And uh, at that time, North Korea uh, asked the international society to provide one-off uh, emergency aid. However, in uh, the 2000s, uh, it has shifted its focus more on long-term development uh, cooperation. So it developed more interest uh, in the 2000s in the uh, MDGs uh, in after 2015 in the SDGs. And uh, North Korea it has been implementing uh, the 2030 agenda uh, to some extent. Uh, so from this, we can see the changed interest of North Korea and more demands for development cooperation. So these interests are illustrated uh, by uh, articles and uh, columns in the uh, Rodong Shinmun. In the uh, North Korean ambassador uh, to the UN has been making speeches every year saying that uh, the DPRK supports the 2030 agenda of the UN and the DPRK uh, will uh, take part in pursuing the goals. In North Korea's cooperation with the UN has become more uh, specific uh, with Kim Jong-un uh, pursuing the so-called normalization of the state. Uh, so before Kim Jong-un uh, taking the power, uh, the military used to be uh, the uh, major player in North Korea, but it, now it's more uh, about the uh, party. And uh, that is 
why uh, North Korea uh, is focusing more on economic development. And uh, they are also establishing more detailed plans for its economic development, not just by itself, but also uh, in cooperation with the international society. In other words, uh, it is trying to create a more enabling environment for its economic development, working with the United Nations. And as I mentioned earlier, the UN SDGs allow for autonomy uh, to uh, member states. In uh, North Korea, accordingly, established uh, national development goals or the NDGs uh, that covers uh, the uh, sustainable development goals in their own manner. So the uh, uh, NDG1 uh, is the reinforcement of the people's regime uh, and the people first uh, policy, which covers many of the uh, economic issues. Uh, and NDG2 uh, focuses on science and education, covering uh, the related uh, SDGs. And NDG3 uh, is establishing self-sufficient and knowledge-based economy. Uh, which covers uh, knowledge uh, and uh, economic issues in the SDGs. NDG4 uh, covers uh, gender equality and the social uh, development uh, with the official theme of a fully developed socialist culture in its terms. So from this, we can see uh, that North Korea uh, is uh, establishing plans uh, for economic and social development uh, in relation uh, with the uh, so, uh, SDGs. Uh, of course, uh, it has not been successfully implementing those plans, uh, in particular due to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, since 2020. So more recently, North Korea uh, is actually seeing more distance from the international society and is struggling uh, to achieve the goals. Now, this is the institutional framework of the uh, implementation of the SDGs in North Korea. So now uh, the uh, cabinet uh, is taking uh, a major role in establishing the uh, plans, establishing and implementing the plans related to uh, the SDGs. And when we take a closer uh, look, North Korea actually changes its organizations, uh, reflecting their uh, shift of focus uh, among these uh, goals. And this is the most uh, recent one uh, that. Uh, also uh, deals with fighting climate change and responding to natural disasters. In 2018, North Korea established a national um, emergency and a disaster committee uh, as part of the efforts uh, to establish systems to uh, tackle natural disasters uh, in an advanced manner. And it is heard that North Korea is also recently setting uh, more detailed plans to deal with climate change. So let's take a look at the uh, food security uh, sector. So uh, this is one of the uh, uh, key uh, sectors uh, in the uh, NDR, uh, NDG of North Korea. And yeah, as you can see in this uh, chart, North Korea's uh, crop yield is unstable. So in many years, it has failed to uh, meet the uh, 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 production target uh, due to uh, the uh, lack of uh, quick restoration from natural disasters uh, and lack of modernization and scientific development uh, in terms of seed uh, development. 
So North Korea is focusing on uh, sea development, uh, establishing irrigation uh, infrastructure. And uh, in order to diversify uh, agricultural production, uh, North Korea is also pursuing uh, the growth of the livestock industry, uh, vegetable uh, and fruit production and fishing as well. So like I said earlier, North Korea is also making efforts uh, to uh, develop its own seas, introduce more scientific uh, farming methods, establishing irrigation uh, infrastructure, and so on. Uh, and more recently, uh, it's focusing really on the development of agriculture science and technology. Uh, and part of that is establishing an agriculture information system, which shows uh, North Korea's interest uh, in establishing uh, a database, database uh, for agriculture that can lead to more modernized agriculture system. Now, uh, the uh, health and medical service part. So, uh, in, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, North Korea uh, has its own healthcare system in operation, uh, but they are lacking data, uh, including uh, information uh, of uh, mor uh, morbidity rate, uh, infection rate, uh, in uh, the capability to analyze the data. Now, North Korea uh, still uh, has high uh, incidence of uh, infectious diseases, uh, but the numbers are decreasing. And uh, recently, North Korea uh, decided uh, to uh, reduce premature death from non-communicable diseases. Uh, in uh, with the uh, pandemic, uh, North Korea is um, emphasizing uh, overcoming the challenges such as um, lack of healthcare professionals, uh, lack of pharmaceutical uh, and medical device factory and technology, and, uh, and lack of essential medicine. Uh, so the uh, uh, North Korea's plan uh, is to enhance the capabilities of healthcare professionals uh, in the integration of the um, infrastructure uh, integration in public health. So uh, I believe uh, this uh, can be done. Uh, in cooperation with uh, South Korea, for example, uh, by uh, utilizing a remote uh, healthcare system uh, and remote training. Now, uh, let me uh, take a look uh, at uh, the uh, areas of potential cooperation. Uh, these uh, goals are put forward by uh, North Korea. First of all, uh, goal seven, guaranteeing access to mod modern and sustainable energy. Uh, part of the goal uh, is to expand the share of renewable energy. And there's goal eight, uh, science-based uh, national economy and modernization of the infrastructure. Uh, now, North Korea has its own uh, targets here, uh, including 
uh, curbing the uh, CO2 emissions, but I believe we can set even more ambitious targets if they work with the international uh, society. In regarding uh, goal 11, uh, it talks about uh, disaster risk management. Uh, and I believe this is uh, there is a huge potential for international cooperation here. Uh, North Korea recognizes uh, that need uh, uh, and also uh, focuses on introducing international standards on standards. Now there's goal 12, uh, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, de details include reuse and recycling of waste. And North Korea's uh, VNR uh, discusses a need uh, for a waste uh, measurement system uh, in uh, which requires also international cooperation. Uh, and there are other goals regarding climate change. So uh, in general, uh, North Korea uh, has set its own uh, targets, and they also recognize the need to uh, update them uh, with uh, catching up with the uh, international trend. And uh, uh, regarding uh, the uh, utilization of the uh, coastal uh, in maritime resources uh, in biodiversity, uh, it recognizes a need uh, for uh, establishing information collection uh, in analysis uh, system. So uh, these are uh, North Korea's goals uh, regarding the environment and climate change. Uh, so the uh, key concepts uh, are uh, sustainability uh, regarding uh, climate change and utilization of data by introducing a data management uh, infrastructure. And to apply these uh, important goals to the uh, DMZ and the border area, uh, I believe uh, we can uh, decide on three main principles. First of all, peaceful use. Uh, second, conservation of the environment and the ecosystem. Uh, and third, you, uh, uh, revitalization of the local economy uh, in the border area. And as for inter-Korean cooperation, we can start uh, with non-political and non-commercial areas, uh, such as humanitarian assistance, and uh, in the approach uh, to development uh, should be harmonized with conservation. So we uh, talk a lot about conservation uh, of the uh, ecosystem, but it should not be in conflict uh, with the development of the areas for the uh, basic necessities of uh, the residents. In uh, last but not least, uh, we can think about these, these uh, inter-Korean cooperation in initiatives under the uh, UN sanctions regime. So these are just uh, suggestions. Uh, first of all, knowledge sharing initiative, uh, where the two Koreas share information in healthcare, ecology, and the environment. Uh, so that North Korea uh, can can build capabilities in uh, utilizing the uh, data uh, and reinforcing its uh, system. Uh, we can also uh, cooperate in technology and education. For that, we have to identify the key areas for cooperation uh, in uh, the uh, initiatives for uh, basic scientific research in agriculture, healthcare, the environment. Uh, ecology and energy. And last, uh, tourism cooperation. Of course, it is possible uh, under the UN sanctions regime 
uh, and at the same time, there is a growing uh, interest in ecological and environmental tourism. So I uh, believe development and the growth of the tourism industry can go hand in hand uh, with sustainability and protecting uh, the environment. So I think we can uh, talk about uh, both conservation and development of the DMZ uh, in uh, North Korean cities, uh, including Wonsan, uh, for inter-Korean cooperation in tourism. These are my suggestions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We heard from the four presenters. And actually, it took more than time um, than uh, we anticipated. But given that the topics are complementary, and they are not, uh, you know, um, issue, uh, issues of disagreement that much, so, you know, in-depth discussion might not be possible. But anyways, uh, the Biden administration and the global look into the climate change is changing, and that is linked with the um, issue of DMZ. And when it comes to Korean Peninsula, under the order of amnesty regime, the under the, the, the division on Korean Peninsula, various uh, inter-Korean uh, issues like environmental, uh, water issues were also looked at. And then we also talked about sustainable development of North Korea and linked up with that environmental issues again and, you know, border area issues. So. From big um, issues, uh, we linked that up to the, uh, you know, Korean Peninsula issues and North Korean issues, and that's how all these different topics uh, connect with each other. I think the big uh, theme, the umbrella theme of today, is you know, carbon neutral, neutral, or climate change. So with uh, linked up with that global uh, phenomena or uh, hot topic, uh, how to link that out with the Korean Peninsula and DMZ issues and find uh, uh, solutions. I think uh, Professor Lee talked about uh, inter-Korean relationship uh, in relations using uh, renewable uh, energy. And so he proposed uh, approaching the Korean cooperation from a new perspective. In the past, it was linking the labor and land of North Korea with our uh, North South Korean capital. But now we can go into knowledge intense um, industry uh, based uh, cooperation, uh, creating, uh, you know, uh, high value added uh, industries through cooperation and that type of industry compress could be in the border um, area. Then uh, from uh, Secretary Kim, we heard that uh, bio di preserving biodiversity from that perspective, environmental issues or carbon uh, neutral, uh, keeping uh, you know carbon net zero can be approached. So maybe the uh, eco ecosystem of um, you know Korean Peninsula needs to be uh, resuscitated, and talked about. Uh, that DMZ can be observant of carbon and, you know, the wetlands and uh, the uh, flora and fauna of DMZ uh, by reviving their ecosystem, uh, we could uh, leverage that toward uh, uh, protecting the environment and preventing any climate uh, uh, change related disasters. So in that context that um, DMZ, which we uh, preserved in pristine condition for uh, 70 years as the carbon observant, it could play a role. And then from uh, Dr. Che, we heard that in the division uh, regime that we are currently living, there are different issues we face. So by incorporating the um, border um, area water management, uh, and also, you know, um, disease control uh, that can be tackled through inter-Korean cooperations. Now, in the border um, 
area. I mean, you know, Yanggu is also that uh, within that region, and uh, with the uh, continuing division of two, two Koreas, uh, and with the uh, tension between two Koreas, the quality of life in this um, area has become rather low. So we need to change this into a peace regime so that we can uh, offer more um, better quality of life for uh, cit uh, citizens. But um, you know, because of nuclear issue in North Korea, many talked about non-nuclear uh, uh, peace regime, but. Uh, with the um, pandemic uh, that we suffered, uh, we now uh, know the how daily lives are precious, so we could have more eco-friendly uh, peace regime or environment-friendly peace regime. And then uh, from uh, Dr. Cho, we talked about that um, North Korea voluntarily reporting their uh, issues and uh, seeking sustainable uh, development. Now, when it comes to inter-Korean cooperation and in solving the nuclear uh, issues, freeze and re resulting compensation or one-off uh, support like a food uh, aid uh, were uh, talked about. But instead of that, it's a one-off um, effort for sustainable development and um, growth. Under that uh, goal, I mean, North Korea uh, itself is coming out with the economic development plan and under uh, various uh, uh, control and sensors uh, they are trying to survive but uh, they even lack uh, you know everyday food so given that um, situation uh, you know, maybe uh, talking about carbon trading or um, making carbon at zero might be uh, far from their uh, urgent fundamental challenges. But uh, uh, so developing countries are very much into uh, responding to climate change, but uh, developing countries uh, find it difficult to think about this because their fire survival is still a serious um, challenge. So ecology, peace, tourism are some key words uh, that uh, pique uh, pick the interest of North Korea. And they tried to do something in the area, but was met with the pandemic. Uh, so they uh, result, they uh, reverted to you know just um, trying to survive. So that was my kind of uh, two cent summary of all the presentations. Uh, now we have about five minutes left. So of the uh, presenters in your presentation, if you want, think uh, you didn't say what was needed to be said, or if you have anything to add or any question you want to ask. And maybe as a closing comment, uh, we can give each uh, speaker one minute. So starting from Professor Lee. Uh, yes, um, for me, I do not have anything to add besides the presentations that I've given. Just that as the moderator summarized, a lot of people ask you know if I say that uh, they it, you know North Korea has very low GDP very poor technology level so the given the can they really uh, cooperate with uh, South Korea with the high level technology and uh, solid uh, economic uh, base uh, to that um, issue let me say this uh, you know, this is, uh, I have my own kind of DNA theory. I mean, it's not a based on academic research. I'm just saying that we share DNA between two Koreas. Now, about 10 or years ago, what was covered on the news a lot was that there were wild uh, swines that uh, was in the border area with South uh, North Korea, and how to block that uh, was tested by the reporters. 
and um, the boars. Uh, we, if we throw something to these wild uh, uh, boars, um, they try to uh, smell it, uh, and it was uh, what they threw was the uh, feces of uh, a tiger, and it got reaction from wild uh, boars. But wild boars never met tigers, uh, but why did they react? Because it was engraved in their uh, DNA. So in uh, Korean Peninsula, for thousands of uh, years, uh, we lived together. But we've been only divided 70 years. So if we say we live 100 years, calculation shows me we've been only separated for about few hours. So of your, if you see about two or three percent uh, is uh, spent of your uh, income, and the North Korean uh, people that came to South Korea when we asked questions a few years ago, when we did a survey to them, the, besides the official salary that you get from the government, uh, how much do you pay for the uh, private um, education? Two or three percent global average, it was 12 percent uh, Korean average. What do you think North Korean said for um, private education? Again, 12 percent, same as South Korea. And we are very good in semiconductor, electricity, automobile, petrochemical industries. So uh, if you base that in our D my DNA th uh, theory, there's a few a really good potential for cooperation. Thank you. So um, we don't have uh, uh, enough time. Please make it short. So the uh, uh, COP uh, started in 1992, and that was when uh, people uh, were already talking uh, about technological development to fight climate change. Um, so uh, that was when we didn't have much tools to really reduce emissions, and uh, since 1992, we have emitted a lot of more carbon. So I'd like to uh, emphasize uh, that uh, uh, that is why uh, conservation of uh, the forest uh, and the uh, carbon uh, market uh, mechanism uh, have become the focus of interna international discussion, uh, including uh, the uh, COP uh, next month. I hope uh, in relation to that, we can uh, elevate DMZ uh, to the uh, global discourse. A peaceful usage and cooperation in the DMZ, it's about how we can accommodate such uh, effort. In North Korea, if we, they say we do uh, in DMZ, uh, what we think is meaningful was opposed by North Korea. They say it will solidify division, and uh, what they were interested in is, is uh, to have good short-term game. So the two Koreas had different perspective. To persuade North Korea, we need to throw carrots on a short-term basis uh, to them, but that requires huge uh, development uh, and investment in short term. So how to compromise will be the key going forward. Maybe one, yeah, one very short sentence. All right. So in the COVID-19 pandemic last year, uh, the entire world realized that solidarity and cooperation is the only way uh, for survival in the long term. We, uh, when we apply this uh, to the Korean Peninsula, uh, we need uh, inter-Korean uh, cooperation to uh, issues that cannot be anticipated uh, in the future. Uh, and the DMZ used to be the uh, space for uh, conflict, but we should now transform it to a space of solidarity and cooperation, which will be a starting point uh, for a more peaceful and stable Korean Peninsula. Thank you. I uh, wanted to uh, give opportunities for those of you in the floor to ask questions, uh, but due to the time limit and because we have 
uh, other uh, chances for floor discussion in the afternoon. Uh, we have to wrap up uh, the morning session now. So, uh, resolving inter-Korean uh, tensions in implementation of uh, the agreements that already exist uh, are critical for any uh, progress on the Korean Peninsula. In particular, uh, the uh, September 19th Comprehensive Military Agreement should be implemented. If that happens, we can accelerate cooperation in the DMZ and the border area. Now, instead of thinking about making new agreements, we should focus on implementing uh, the already made commitments. So with that, let us wrap up the morning session. I'd like to thank all participants and speakers. Thank you, thank you very much.